Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to R Squared Technology. I'm your host, Ryan, and let's get ready to SolidWorks. Happy Friday, everyone. I hope your week's been going well. We are going to continue on, as always, in the Beginner's Guide to SolidWorks 2022, Level 1. Link in the description where you can pick up a copy to follow along. And today we are completing a part from chapter two, the worm gear, where we'll be adding in the threading. So with that, let's get started. All right, so on page 331, section 16.1 at the top of the page, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have this part previously, so you'll have to go back to chapter two if you don't, because I'm not going to provide you with a part file to start from here. Oh, no, no, no. You get to go through all the exercises and build up to this point. So, 16.1. The first thing we're going to do is modify an existing fillet. Fillet 1 here. So we'll simply select that. Then we'll choose Edit Feature. And we're going to change it from 0.0625 to 0.031. Then we'll click OK. Hit Control S. And now we'll move on to section 16.2 on the middle of page 331. Next, on section 16.2, page 331, we need to modify the original sketch. So with that, from the Cut Revolve feature, we're going to go into Sketch 3 here and Edit. Control-8 to bring it normal to. And we need to make some slight mods here. So this dimension will remain the same. This overall dimension here is now going to go down to 1.5. This is going to be 1.1. 1 .1. And this dimension remains the same. So double check that you have one and a half for this external here, point one. We can even move this over here if that makes it easier. Technically it'll go right there. Point one for this dimension here. And then this one should be one inch here. And this remains point four. So we can click okay exit the sketch and you can do rebuild up here if it doesn't already change the model then we can bring it spacebar isometric hit control s and now we'll move on to section 16.3 at the top of page 332 all right at the top of page 332 section 16.3 we're going to add an auxiliary plane parallel to the top plane so we'll come over here into the feature tree, choose the top plane, then make sure you're in the features tab, choose reference geometry, choose a plane, and we need to do an offset of 0.95. So come down here, 0.95, enter, click OK, hit Control S, and that will bring us to section 16.4 at the middle of page 332. And now from here we'll continue with section 16.4 at the middle of page 332 where we're going to start a three-point arc on this plane. So make sure plane one is selected, hit sketch, and then choose a three-point arc and we can hit control 8 to bring that plane normal to. And we'll click here for one, click here for two, and about here for three. And then we can hit right click, select, hit control S, and we'll now move on to page 333 at the top with section 16.5. The next thing we need to do is locate this arc, fully define it. So to do so, we will add a center line from the origin, click and drag out, make sure it has a vertical relation, click, right click, select, this can be an infinite length. And then with our arc, we'll want to select the center point and make it coincident to the origin. 
And then we are going to take the two endpoints of the arc and make sure that they have a vertical relation. And then finally, we'll add some dimensions here. We need to make the endpoint. We'll select this here and the edge, silhouette edge of our gear. This needs to be 0.1. And then finally, this distance from the center line needs to be 0 0.025, like such. There are a number of different ways to define an arc, and that's how we've done it here. Now with that, we move on to section 16.6 .6 at the top of page 334. Now from here, before we move on to section 16.6, .6, we will exit the sketch, and then we will come over here in our feature tree and click on sketch 5 once, twice, and we will rename it path. Simply click out in the graphics area, hit control S. All right, section 16.6 .6 at the top of page 334. We're gonna add another auxiliary plane here. So do, to do so, select the features tab, reference geometry, choose a plane, and now we'll zoom in and we're gonna choose the arc here. Make sure that in the properties it's set to perpendicular. And then we're gonna choose this endpoint here which may have a slightly different value depending on which end you select. And then we can click OK. And then we're going to rename this Path Plane, Profile Plane. Click in the graphics area, hit Control S, spacebar, bring it back isometric. And now we'll move on to section 16.7 at the middle of page 334. All right, section 16.7 at the middle of page 334. We're gonna do an additional cut profile to the overall gear here to modify it for the threading accordingly. So let's right click on the profile plane, hide that. Then we'll choose the right plane and hit Control 8 to bring it normal to. And then we will start a sketch in here and we're going to create a box at the top and that box is going to be something like this it's okay not to be exact right now because we will tune it up in here in a moment so we want to make sure that this ed point and this point of that vertical line Actually, we could just do it. This line and the silhouette edge are collinear. And then this line and this edge are collinear. Then come over here, draw a center line from the origin, and we can drag out infinite with a horizontal relation. Then we'll want this to be a double dimension of 1.7 click OK and from here we can go straight to the features tab and choose revolve cut 360 degrees click OK hit control S spacebar bring it back isometric and now we'll move on to page 335 section 16.8 at the top all right, section 16.8 at the top of page 335, we're going to make the gear profile. And to do so, I'm going to right click on the profile plane, make it visible again, hit control eight to bring it normal to, and we'll do control eight again to bring the other side normal to, so basically the right side, or the back side, depending on how you wanna look at it. And then we'll go to the sketch tab, we're gonna start a sketch with a center line, doesn't matter where, something like this. And then what we can also do is tools. And then we can choose sketch tools and we can turn on dynamic mirror for this next part. Choose this line. And then from here we can choose this, this, 
at something like this select and we're now done with dynamic mirror so now what we'll do is go into smart dimensions Oop. let's we gotta add a one more midpoint line here and dynamic mirror is still on so choose a center line that connects to one point that creates our midpoint line there and now we can go into smart dimensions and make this point 0 0.055 make this height to this point point zero seven five make this width point one eight five make this height to this height point one one eight and then finally what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna press and hold the center scroll wheel to rotate it and we'll select the arc line and this point here and we will pierce it. And that is going to fully define the text and allow us to do the proper sweep cut along that path. We can click OK, exit the sketch, and we're gonna rename this sketch Gear Profile. From here, we'll hit the space bar, bring it back isometric, hit Control S, and now we can move on to page 336 at the top for section 16.9. All right, section 16.9 at the top of page 336. What we'll start with is right click and hide the profile plane, hit Control S. And then we're gonna wanna choose the gear profile. Actually, we'll do it this way. We'll just go to the features tab and we're gonna choose a sweep cut. Now, if this was a straight line, we could have just used this profile and cut straight through the part, but we've got a curve, so this is our only option. So, from the graphics view, we're gonna choose the gear profile, and our path is, well, the path sketch. And from here, you should get your banana yellow preview. So we can click OK hit control S and we will hit the space bar and bring it back isometric and from here we can move on to section 16.10 at the bottom of page 336 all right section 16.10 at the bottom of page 336 we're just gonna add a fillet in the trough here so come to the features tab choose fillet select this edge here and this edge here and then choose 0 0.015 as the radius click OK spacebar to bring it back isometric control S and now we'll move on to section 16.11 at the top of page 337 next section 16.11 at the top of page 337 they want us to make a circular pattern of both the cut sweep and fillet so come to the features tab from the linear pattern choose a drop down choose a circular pattern and then the features what we're going to choose here as far as our direction one goes we will choose this diameter here and then we will choose the feature cut sweep and fill it to and make sure that it is set to 22 copies here and click OK hit control S and now we will move on to section 16.12 or 12 at the bottom of page 337. All right, the finishing touch to our part. Section 16.12 at the middle of page 337. We're going to do one more fillet. So make sure you're in the features tab and then choose fillet. And for this, we're going to choose both the groove and cut revolve to and we previously made the dimension point 015 so we are good on that click OK hit control S and we can even turn real view graphics back on 
do a little bit of rotation, show it off. And that is the completion of the worm gear. I'll bring it back spacebar and control S one more time. So that is going to complete this part. Next, we'll be looking at going into potentially the assembly of that, but I'm gonna leave it a little bit of a mystery for now. So until next Friday, I hope you all learned something and take care.